If you've ever played chess, I'm sure about one thing. You've blundered. Yeah, all of us have blundered. However, there is something that we do very rarely. That's playing a brilliant move. I very rarely play a brilliant move and I'm quite certain that's the case for most chess players. But in this video, we're going to take a look at instances, three in particular, where players had a brilliant chance to play an absolutely stunning move, but they didn't find it. And in sad cases, they went on to lose. The first example we have is between Grandmasters Parimar and Negi and Hu Yifan. Negi is playing white, Hu Yifan is playing black. In this position, Negi chose to play Queen H6, which is not the brilliant move, don't worry. Rook H7, Queen F6, Rook G7. And then he chose D6, after which Hu Yifan unpinned the king, going King H7. Now there's no more pin. And actually, she went on to win the game with black. So where did Negi make an error? Because believe it or not, right here in this position, there's a hidden brilliancy. Why don't you give it a shot and see if you can find it? I'm going to reveal the move. The move is the absolutely stunning Bishop E3, hanging the bishop. Now, why Bishop E3? First of all, what makes white better here? Well, white is better because of this file and basically the spin. The king is misplaced and the queen is beautifully placed. This is why white is better. How can white take advantage of this? Very simple. Bishop, okay, that's not simple at all. Bishop E3, you first do this. And why do you do this? If king h7, black tries to unpin, of course, you have queen h6. And that's not check, that's checkmate, guys. So you're absolutely helpless in that case. The other threat that white has is if black does nothing, then you don't have to worry. You can just play bishop h6. No issues, bishop h6 is completely winning for white, which is why. Instead of this, black after bishop e3 has to take the bishop. And once you take the bishop, we have queen takes h4. Now you can only block with the rook. You could block with the queen, but if you give up the queen, it's basically game over, isn't it? So instead of blocking with the queen, you block with the rook. Queen f6 check. If rook h g7, rook h1. And now you have to block with the queen, after which rook takes is checkmate. And you can block with the other rook, but queen d8, rook g8. And guess what? Queen takes g8 is checkmate. Or, if you want to have some fun, you can play queen f6 check and again, just repeat the moves once and checkmate. That's the first example of when white missed a brilliant move, which is bishop e3. The second example is an interesting one because it's actually my game. This is a game that I played about a year and a half or maybe two and a half years ago and I was playing white. My opponent is about 700 or 800 points higher rated than me. And basically, he's played an error here. Bishop b4 is a bad move. I'm quite certain that Leeches is showing a question mark, which is a new feature. So you can tell very clearly it's a bad move. But I responded with another bad move. I responded with a3. And basically, long story short, I lost, which is kind of the recurring theme. When you miss a brilliancy, you end up losing. But there is a very nice move here, which you can try and find, which I'm about to reveal. That is the move knight takes d5. What does it do? Does it give up the queen? Yes. Does it win the queen back? Yes. But what happens after that? King f7. And guess what? You have a rook hanging on c1, a rook hanging on e1, and a knight hanging on f6. So basically, if white is to win this position, he must play or she must play very, very accurately. The right move, rook c7. You must continue like this. Give up the knight. So white is down a piece. d5. Check from this bishop all the way on b2. Very annoying position for black. If black goes e5, rook takes e5, and this fork, or it's not a fork, is it? It's called a pin. Yeah, this pin is basically, basically there are one gazillion, there are a gazillion discovered checks. So as soon as I move this rook, it's pretty much game over. Which is why black cannot play e5 and run into all of these discovered checks. Instead, black should go king f5. And here, please don't play the hasty move rook e5 check, which might seem very tempting. The problem with this is, yes, of course, if king f6, again, you have a gazillion discovered checks, but you can go king g4. And after rook c4 check, just king h3. And somehow, this king is really safe on h3. I can't believe it myself, but that's the truth. There is no way to further attack the king or to put the king in any reasonable check, which is exactly why white is still slightly better here, even though he's down a piece but the position is playable, which is why don't play the hasty rook e5. Instead, go for f3. 
What do you do here? You threaten checkmate. And there are only two ways to stop this mate. One is to go h5, but this is just bad because rook e5, king f6, you have a gazillion discovered checks. One of them is simply rook takes e6. You can't take the rook because you're in check. And then rook f6 is checkmate. So don't, again, black shouldn't go for h5. Instead, black should try bishop h5. But after bishop h5, we have again the very nice move, g4, putting both the pieces under attack, or rather king in check and bishop under attack. You take, and the very important intermediate check, rook e5 check, king g6, and after f takes g4, white is completely winning here. It's not like he's up material, but the position is very good. The rooks are active, these rooks are passive, the knight is useless, the knight is definitely better, the pawn on g4 is excellent, and this bishop is definitely better than its opponent on d2, which is basically why white is completely winning here, and also why if I had found it, knight takes d5, completely wins. It's a really painful loss because I did end up losing this game and I did feel I played pretty okay after this, but I still lost. Um, especially when I found out that I had this brilliant knight takes d5. So it is rather painful, but the things we do for content, you know. So let's go to the last example. Ni Hua versus Le Quang Liem, two Chinese grandmasters, which is why I don't think it's too far-fetched to presume that the game was in China because the players are two Chinese grandmasters. Now, in this position, black, Le Quang Liem, let's just flip the board because I want black on our side. Le Quang Liem played the move A takes B3. And basically after G6, white's threatening mate on H7. Uh, if you take the pawn, then it's mate on H8. Le Quang continued with h5, trying to basically not run into the immediate checkmate, but after queen h5, bishop a3, king takes b3, basically Le Quang Liam with black resigned here, simply because there is no real way to stop checkmate on h8. However, oh wait, is there? Can I play king takes g7? So queen h7 check, king f8, um, yeah, I win with gf7, yes, because First of all, if you take my queen, then I take your queen and you have two rooks hanging, you have the bishop on h7 hanging, so that will be winning. Basically, yeah, Le Quang just resigned after king takes b3 because he's completely lost, which is why after c4, the move that Le Quang should have found after which he's completely winning, it's a very tricky move, but it's a very pretty one nonetheless. I'm gonna give you a second and now I'm gonna tell you the move. The move is knight takes on g5. Why knight g5? If you remember, g5, g6 is the problem. We just eliminate the pawn and we give up the knight, of course, but we win it back. But here white plays bishop takes e4. And now we're in more trouble because now there is obviously this mate threat on h7, but we have to play very carefully. And if we play carefully, guys, we're completely winning with black. Bishop c3 check, giving up another piece. King takes c3, and here, don't play the hasty move, haste is waste, isn't that the saying, or haste makes waste, whatever, queen takes b3 check is a bad move, because king d2, queen b2, king e1, queen c3, bishop d2, and actually, black has no more checks, and you're gonna run into checkmate on h7, so don't play this guys, don't play this, instead, after king takes c3, play another very pretty move, a1, queen, and check, what can white do? Rook a1? Well, this isn't a problem. It's a very, very, very forced checkmate from this point on. So that's not an issue. Basically, white cannot take our second queen. So king d2. And surprisingly, we have two queens on the board, but actually we are the one who is being threatened with checkmate on h7. So we have to play all moves check here, but in the end, it's winning for black. Queen bd4. Bishop d3. Again, if you move the king, then we just take on e4. Defend h7 and we're just completely winning. So bishop d3, queen a b2, king e1. And can you find the final piece of the puzzle to win the game for black? The move is queen takes h2 and after rook h2, queen g1 check. Picking up the rook and after you pick up the rook, I don't know, let's say uh, king e2, queen takes. You defend mate, you have two rooks and guess what? You're up a queen, so that's game over. So that's it guys. Three brilliant chess moves that won or played, two by Grandmasters, one by me. Common thread is that whenever you miss a brilliancy, you end up losing the game. If you like the video, you know what to do, don't you? You like, you subscribe, you share, you comment, anything you can think of to help the video, go ahead and do it. Thank you for watching. 
and I'll see you soon for more chess.